Welcome to part four. I think it's four, is it four? I think it's four, yeah. Okay, so what are they asking us to do? Well, what they're asking us to do now is to put the, the motor on here. And what it says is remove plywood motor mount space F1A, which is this square piece. Uh, carefully feed the motor leads through F1, which is here. That's the correct way up. Battery out of the way. Through there. And let's have a look. Uh, using one of the axis holes top of the form as shown, locate supplied M3 screws. Now, the M3 screws and washers and mount uh, F1A space to the rear of the motor mount so that the slots align with the holes in the bulkhead before screwing the assembly to the bulkhead. Tighten the screws into the captive nuts. Now, the nuts they give you sorry no nuts the bolts they give you okay first of all the flatheads uh with a slot not my favorite the other thing is, is that these are i can hardly hold it they're 10 millimeters long and they're not long enough and in actual fact these are not m3s they're m5s these are five mil so as far as i know they are so what i had to do i had in my little tray um some 20 mil long bolts and i cut them down now you need to cut them down to 13 millimeters if you don't they're not going to fit uh you don't want them any longer than 13 millimeters because from what i can gather the battery goes in here from what I can gather so obviously you don't want anything longer than 13 mil because the battery won't fit in so as you can probably see that's fairly flush in there uh, it's not difficult to do you just use a, a hacksaw you, you, you hold it in a vise if you've got one or, or somebody you can hold it for you some grips chop it off use a file file off the, the end um, before you do that I did have one with me here a moment ago. Put a nut on the end of the thread. I can't find it. I've lost it. Before you cut it, put a, a nut on down to the head then cut it. And then that thread, file it. And then when you, when you come to the nut, the nuts will help it to thread up. So when you come to put it in, it'll, it'll start on the thread. So, 13 millimeters and i'll just put that in my tray there you go don't want to lose that use it for something else so what they want you to do then is go and go to page 13 plug the esc into the receiver along with the elevator and rudder servos making sure that they are correctly inserted into correct receiver ports insert the supplied y lead into the aileron port into the receiver so for the ailerons you have a lead that has two leads off it it goes into one so it's the shape of a Y basically self-explanatory uh, feed the ESC uh, power leads through the front axis hole on the survey tray and connect them and the motor leads in the order used when setting up the electronics test electronics temporarily connect these ailerons servos to the y lead switch on the transmitter and connect the battery to the esc and check that a the motor turns correct direction anti-clockwise when viewed from the front if it does not swap the leads until it does which is fair enough b the rudder and elevator servos work and are correct correctly connected the rudder servo is on the right and the elevator on the left when viewed from the top of the fuselage c the aileron servos operate correctly and that the servo output arms are centered then test when the test has been completed you're set to your satisfaction disconnect the battery unplug the aileron servos from the y lead leaving the y lead plugged into the receiver so we're coming close then to putting the undersides in because obviously you wouldn't do that at this stage normally 
So that's telling me that they want to put the battery tray in and uh, stuff like that. Um, feed the ESC battery through the lower axis hole F3 and mount the ESC vertically to the rear of F3 with servo tape. I would recommend using Velcro uh, because if you need to gain access to it and it's got Velcro on it, it'll, it'll come off fairly easily. Um, it's up to you, it's your choice, I'm not telling you to do it, but that's that's what I recommend. Uh, right, so locate and remove the plywood parts F15 from sheet 7. So we're going a little bit ahead of ourselves there. So what they're saying is, is to check the functionality. Now, what I've done is, I've marked it up, there's your rudder, I've marked it up elevator. So on this side, it's the elevator, this side, it's the rudder, and it's best to mark them because when you come to the other side you want to make sure they're marked on the inside so that it's a very quick reference you don't get confused and then have to look it all up just just mark it so you know what's going on as far as i can tell the battery goes into this front part here from what i can tell um, you need to make sure that the motor is running in the right direction it's anti-clockwise so i've put little arrows on there to indicate which way it should go it does run the correct way i've had it all running um oh here's the nut <laughs> found the nut um and that's all you've got to do so cut these to 50 uh, 13 mil i'll put some posi drive screws in so you, you're not going to slip at some later date um i've made sure this is binded i've attach the battery to it i've checked that all the servos are working and that the esc is, is working to ensure the rotation of the motor is the correct rotation um, and it is as a safety point best to do this with the propeller off um, if you want to double check you can put the prop on just make sure you, you know you got your fingers out of the way and stuff like that and then you'll feel the airflow coming this way these aileron servos which come off the y lead should travel in opposite directions so if one goes that way this one should go that way or if this one goes that way this one should go that way okay now i have marked on the plan uh, the connections for the receiver they show this receiver which is um, a spectrum this one is an AR410, and that's what they show. It doesn't mean to say you've got to use a Spectrum AR410, but that's what they're showing, and that's what I'm using. Now, number one, now don't get confused because it says BAT on there. Ignore that. Number one is from the ESC, or if you like, the speed controller. That's your speed controller. Number two is ailerons, which is your Y lead. There's your Y lead. Number three is elevator, which is your servo there. And number four is your rudder. Okay, so just re-emphasizing that if you got to this stage. Uh, obviously, we've already marked the, uh, the, mo the, the motor leads. So they should go back the way you had them before and the motor's turning anti-clockwise with the arrows in that direction. So we've done all that. The servo arms line up. Okay. And then we're all good to go from there. And then we go to step, looks like 28. So I'm going to put the Velcro in and put the these the receiver and the ESC where they've told me to and then I'll come straight back because we have to put these in F15 F14 whoops and F16 in for the landing gear and we need to get our metal 20 gauge rod to use as a spacer so that the later date we can put the landing gear in so Bear with me just a second. Mm. 
Well, it turns out this is part five. So how much of a, a, a fool do I feel? Anyway, what the heck? Push the boat out and live a little. Well, maybe live a lot. Anyway, so uh, pushing rapidly forward. Step 29, identify, remove the plywood parts F14, F16 from sheet seven. Cut four short 15mm long pieces of 20 gauge wire or 0.9mm wire to act as spaces to create the correct gap for the undercarriage wires between F16, F15, F16, F14 and the rear of F2. Insert F15 into the forward slots at the bottom of the fuselage and clamp F16 in the front of F15. With the, with the two of the wire spacers angled as shown, ensuring that the bottom side of F16 is level with the fuselage sides. Clamp F14 with the remaining wires spacers behind F2, making sure that the bottom edge of F14 is level with the fuselage sides. Stick all the parts in place with two parts of epoxy glue, making sure that both gaps are kept clear of the glue and allow the glue to fully set before removing the wire spaces. Now I cheated. I went ahead of it and I'll tell you for why because I had to read that three or four times and I wanted to make sure I got it right. So there is F15. It goes in there, that, that slot. Then F16 goes in front of it and so you need to put a wire spacer in there either side yeah so that when you come to do the undercarriage you can slot in and is free to move and then using epoxy glue it in which means f14 goes at the back of f2 and that's f2 there that's f14 you do the same thing with a piece of wire which is the 20 gauge which is 0.9 millimeters in uh, European uh, in the 1970s that would have been 20 gauge <laughs> okay and that's all you got to do with that bit there um, I've tidied up the, the cabling I've put the receiver on some velcro to one side I have put the uh, speed controller uh, to one side here so the cables can get through freely and there's your battery um, connection there because you've got to keep those servos free from tangling up with the uh, the cables that's really really important so I'm going to pop that back in there just for the moment and then we have to go on to the battery tray now I've not rehearsed this so I'm probably going to get it wrong so if I'm being honest I'm a bit tired Locate and remove battery hatch from sheet 21. Carefully level on one long edge so that it fits against former F3. Well, there's three. There's the battery hatch. And we've previously put in these two bits of 16th there. And that's to hold the battery hatch. Now, that is, as always, pretty much an exact fit. So that's what they mean by bevel that one edge there. And that's where we just put in F14, I think it is, for the wire undercarriage to go in. And that's probably best to look at the drawing here because you'll see that that is the position of the wire undercarriage so that kind of makes sense so we've got to bevel one edge of that now I think to do that in front of you is going to be dull and boring so should I turn off the camera I don't know but I'm going to use some uh, 80 grit for now and I, let's double check it before we commit ourselves. Because it didn't tell you which one to bevel, so you, you, it's, it's your choice. Let's see which is the better fit. Yeah. Hmm. 
sideways view. I think it's better going that way. Take off that bottom edge there. And it'll sit, should sit rather nicely. And you don't have to do it very much either by the looks of it. time wow that didn't take much did it that seating almost exact it probably only needs a mill take it any more than that so that's your battery hatch already nicely done and I believe we need to put some magnets in there oh by the way Henry told me to clean my lens because he said it's all foggy so I've cleaned it Henry uh, right so level battery hatch to fit against f3 that's f3 there drill two millimeter holes for magnets now it does not show which is the front which is the back so I'm guessing they mean the front and they mean on the corners so so your battery hatch is that shape and I from what I can tell the batteries go about here not the batteries what am I talking about the magnets the magnets go about here and here now I've located the two millimeter magnets which are in here Put them open Oop, there you go and it says Locate and remove battery hash from blah, 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 blah. place the two magnets into the magnets right hang on locate yeah 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 locate the four of the supplied two millimeter diameter magnets drill two holes in the opposite corners as shown deep enough to fit a magnet in each we can see around the magnets to stick them into position Stick a strip of clear sticky tape over the magnets and around the long sides, long and side edges of the hatch. Place the other two magnets in the magnets stuck into the hatch. Each one test fit the hatch with the magnets against F14. So that's F14. So the magnets go at the front. Yeah, seems always right to go to the front. Um, does it show it on the yeah on the drawing it shows two millimeter diameter magnets at the front yeah so ah yes I see I see I understand so what they're saying is where's my drill gun using my hand drill the bevel be in the back so the flat parts of front two millimeter hole there two millimeter hole there glue in the magnets and then because you have a gap here and here you then put cellar tape over these attach the magnets put glue on the magnets this way up, put into place, cellar tape stop the, uh, the magnets being glued together, let it go off. But you'll have to be careful because you, you might accidentally glue the, the battery hatch in. 
So you'll have to do that very, very carefully. You might want to consider using some Vaseline on around this area. So in other words, if I take that out, if you put some Vaseline around this area here uh, and there, just in case you do um, sign out the, the hatching, because you're going to have a bit of a time getting that out otherwise. So yeah, I'd glue the, the, the magnets in, let that set, and then put your sellotape on, put your magnets on, do a test fit, trial fit, put that in, don't glue that just yet, go around to the other side and look down the end there and see how they fit, they fit okay, go ahead with it, but just be aware you don't want to glue those magnets into place, so I'm going to do that. And I think I will show you the results in part six. Okay, because sometimes these things go on a bit long, so I'm not going to lose those magnets because I just put them on the end of my drill bit. Well, I hope that makes sense. Uh, and there you go. Um, now, I did mention something about flying my um, little, little glider for the world record attempt at the club, which has happened. Uh, nobody got hurt. Nobody's model went into the ground and there was no mid-air collisions. Um, much to the disdain of the younger members who actually wanted some mid-airs and to have a good laugh over it. But anyway, it was achieved and I will be uh, producing that as my next hangar chat. So look out for hangar chat number four. This is build part five. So I got it wrong at the beginning. I'll dilly-dally with something on the uh, tippy-tappy. And uh, I will see you in part six. And I will obviously show you better how it's uh, what I've done and how I did it. Okay, so that's what you got to do. And then we'll end up making the undercarriage. I can't find the wire for that undercarriage. I'm guessing it's there. I hope it's there because it means I've got to go to the model shop and go and buy some. We should support your model shop. So there you go. See you in part six.